Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Westmoreland and today we're going to talk about solubility. So in our last class we talked about water being a very good solvent and we talked about how water could dissolve substances or solutes that were covalently bonded or substances that were ionically bonded. And we talked about some of the ways that you could tell whether or not a solute would dissolve in water. So for covalently bonded substances, we need to determine whether that solute is polar or nonpolar. So a polar solute, like sugar, will dissolve in water, and a nonpolar covalent solute, like oil, will not. So like dissolves like when we're talking about whether or not a covalent solute will dissolve in water. Since water is a polar solvent, it will dissolve the polar solute. When it comes to ionic compounds, ionic compounds have positive and negative ions, and but even so, some ionic compounds will dissolve in water and others will not. And so for the ionically bonded compounds, we have to use the solubility rules on the star chemistry reference sheet to determine whether the ionic compound is soluble or insoluble. So anytime it's an ionic compound, you'll be able to use this list of solubility of common ionic compounds in water to determine whether that compound in particular is soluble or insoluble. So now we're going to turn our attention to not just whether or not it dissolves, but how fast it dissolves and also how much dissolves. So when we're talking about how fast it dissolves, we're really talking about rate of solution. And it has everything to do with the um, collisions of the particles involved. So this slide here tells you the factors affecting the rate of solution, or how fast something dissolves. So the more the particles collide, the faster the soluble substance will dissolve in water. And these are pretty commonly um, experienced factors affecting the rate of solution. So temperature is one of the factors that affects how fast something dissolves. So everybody knows that sugar will dissolve faster in hot tea than it does in cold tea. And the reason for that is that the particles are moving much more quickly in the hot tea than they are in the cold tea, and therefore they are going to collide more frequently, and that's going to cause them to dissolve faster. Agitation or stirring is also something that can affect how fast something dissolves. So when we stir something, we give the particles kinetic energy or energy of motion, and that motion allows us to um, have more collisions, and that also makes it dissolve faster. And finally, the third factor that affects how fast something dissolves is surface area. So if we have a cube of sugar versus grains of sugar, the grains of sugar are going to dissolve faster because there's more surface area on which those collisions can take place, and therefore it will dissolve faster. So combination of higher temperature, stirring, and greater surface area will have something dissolve faster in the same amount of solute and solvent. So those are the factors affecting the rate. There are also factors affecting how much dissolves. So if we look at this figure right here, we have a graph where temperature is on the x-axis and the grams of solute per 100 milliliters of water is graphed on the y-axis. And so we have these curves, they're called solubility curves. And you can see that at any given temperature, the more grams of sodium nitrate, NaNO3, will dissolve in the same amount of water than the ammonium chloride, the NH4Cl. So the sodium nitrate would be considered more soluble, you can get more grams, in the same amount of water than the ammonium chloride. So 
Sometimes it's simply the nature of the substance, the nature of the solute, and the nature of the solvent that determines how much can dissolve. So certain factors of ionic size and attraction between the ions will cause some things to be able to make more grams dissolved in the same amount of water than others. So the nature of the solute and the solvent is one factor that affects how much can dissolve. And the temperature, as you can see, because each of these curves has a slope to it, also affects how much can dissolve. Some more than others. So some have steeper slopes than others. Some have a greater effect in a change in temperature than others. But as you change temperature, you can see that you can actually have more grams of the same substance dissolved in the same amount of water than others. So this is different than how fast it dissolves. This is actually changing the quantity of solute that is able to be dissolved in the same amount of solvent. You'll notice that some of the curves slope up, and therefore as you increase temperature, you increase the solubility. And a couple of our curves, the NH3 and the SO2 in particular, slope down, which means as you increase temperature, they decrease solubility. The difference between those two is their physical state. So the ones that increase in solubility with an increase in temperature are solids, whereas the ones that decrease in solubility with an increase in temperature are gases. Going back to the slideshow, you can see that the solubility of sol solids is affected by the nature of the solute and the solvent. And as temperature increases, most solids become more soluble. So they would have a positive slope on one of those solubility graphs. Pressure does not affect the solubility of solids. Gases, on the other hand, have the opposite effect. So as temperature increases, the solubility of gases decreases because of the kinetic energy of the gas particles. So you can think about a hot soda versus a cold soda. The cold soda is fizzier. More of the carbon dioxide is trapped in the liquid, more soluble than when it's hot. When it's hot, the, all those gas particles have escaped because they had a great deal of kinetic energy and they escaped from the surface of the liquid. Pressure also does have an effect on gases, and the effect on gases is that as pressure increases, the solubility of gases increases. And this can be seen in, um, in a soda example as well. So when you have a sealed bottle of soda, the pressure inside the bottle is high, and you have a large amount of gas dissolved in the liquid. But when you open up the soda bottle, then you are lowering the pressure inside and the solubility decreases. And that sound you hear psh, when you open up the bottle of soda is the sound of the gas coming out of the solution. It is no longer dissolved. It is escaping into the air. So next class time, we will do a lab where we will be able to observe and measure the solubility of both solids and gases at different temperatures. Thanks for listening.